Um, Lots of research now, I'm a cognitive psychologist, but I work in simulated systems. Um, and we're trying to implement how you can integrate cognitive models, such as the ones that Andreas and Sasha have been talking about, but into social networks where they can actually live, breathe, talk to each other. And so we can see how that plays out in terms of their cognition and in terms of their beliefs over time. Um, I'm going to go into that in a bit more detail. Um, but um, one of the main reasons why we want to do this is um, often when we see someone having a radically different belief from ourselves, we have this knee-jerk reaction to go, oh, you're an idiot, or you just haven't seen the right evidence, or why are you rejecting this sort of caravan narrative that Trump is proposing, or whatever. You must be stupid. So we have this sort of innate, um, I think, um, knee-jerk reaction to the outcome of someone's belief, um, rather than the process at which they arrive at that belief. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to say un inherently it's unsatisfactory to look at the outcome of someone's belief and claim that that makes a significant difference if I can explain it through the same process. So you, in, imagine, for instance, that you look at me and you look at a giraffe. Now, I would posit that a giraffe has a significantly longer neck than me. Um, that's probably true. Um, but you can look at the giraffe and me and go like, oh, that's a neck bias. And someone has built in a significant difference between those two organisms. That's very true. If you slice it down the middle, uh, like at a point in time, and measure a giraffe's neck and my neck, that's entirely different. That is an entirely valid observation. Does that mean that we operate under fundamental different uh, processes of evolution? No. To the hell's to the no. We operate under the exact same process, but just born, uh, like born out different given our environments. So unless we can give a process account of how those two things diverge in time and reach significantly different outcomes, A, we haven't understood it, and B, if we're just focusing on outcomes with a bit like pre darwinian evolutionary theory, i.e. all observation, no theory. So if we want to look at process accounts, we can look at humans in complex information systems. Now, I say complex quite willingly and quite so deliberately because there's a difference between what's known as a complicated system and a complex system. So this sounds like one of those sort of really annoying academic sort of distinctions, but they are really important. So imagine you have to land an aeroplane. That's a really complicated system. I don't know how to do it. I don't know if any of you guys are pilots, but I'm going to assume not. Uh, so I'm going to assume that every one of us, if we got into a cockpit, we will crash land um, and we'll all die. But inherently, you can calculate uh, by changing the parameters of that system you can calculate how to land that flight if you know the, the functions of that system. So like changing the little flaps on the wings, changing the propulsion of the aeroplane and all that means that I can land that plane with mathematical certainty or at least so if I can calculate how that uh, comes about. Conversely, in a complex system, you can have interactions between things and they can sort of spiral into phase shifts that aren't predictable by just knowing the states in the beginning. So think about a demonstration. You go down the street, maybe it's a bit hot, maybe it's a bit crowded, and you're sort of protesting Trump or whatever, um, and someone sort of takes a wee bit of a step forward toward a policeman who may be a bit sort of jilted, or sort of go a bit back or sort of does a bit against you, and you sort of go a bit back and you bump into like the bloke next to you who sort of shoves you because he's really sort of testy and annoyed, and all of a sudden, party time, um, and it's a riot. Now, who started that riot? No one in particular but it was due to interactions between organisms that could sort of engage with each other and things can spiral out of control. So we can see this in market functions, we can see it in all sorts of different functions. And importantly for this kind of talk, we can see it into information systems. So the way in which people can share information is non-linear and it's complex. So the, reason, the way that you deal with a complicated system is through analytical mathematical modeling. You can calculate it. The way you deal with a complex uh, system is by simulation meaning that you can also computationally express it through maths, but you have to play through each and every single time step in order to sort of see where that system ends up. So just to give you an idea of this, this is uh, the OG of complex systems. This is Schelling's segregation model, where all of these uh, yellow and blue bits represent citizens of different types. Um, here, they're reasonably open-minded, so they are fine living next to two <coughs> other uh, people who are different from them, as long as they live next to one guy who's similar to them. So basically two-thirds, they're happy of different people. So you'd think that this is kind of a pretty stable system, but if you just let them move around a bit, uh, they self-segregate, uh, even though they're uh, really open-minded.
explain it all of them. So this is kind of the aggregate sort of phenomena that can come out of interactions that aren't immediately obvious from the initial conditions of the system. So echo chambers have been shown to um, have been identified in social media. Um, so this is basically when people of like-minded nature start talking to each other and they start reinforcing their beliefs and start pruning their networks uh, through, um, through interactions with each other. So it's basically like when your Facebook uncle says like, oh, something incredibly sort of bigoted, you go like, unfriend. Um, that's kind of like you producing or sort of maintaining your um, echo chamber. Um, and these outcomes are often described to individual differences. This is what I've like, told before, like if you have a very outcome focused thing, you might look at um, sort of Democrats and Republicans go like, oh, they have a different moral foundation, which has been said. Or, oh, they use different heuristics of biases or whatever, which has been said. Or some uh, conspiratorial people have cognitive errors, or they have fallacious reasoning or whatever. That's all probably maybe true, who knows? Um, it's certainly the case that you can observe it, much in the same way that you can observe that a giraffe has a longer neck than me. Again, that doesn't mean that we operate under fundamentally different processes. Yes? All right. So, um, there's been some research that shows that wrong beliefs can arrive through rational processes, such as uh, which, uh, Bayesian modeling as well. Um, so the question that I want to pursue here is, in principle, can an optimally rational agent become member of an echo chamber of a wrong belief? Because if it can, then all of these things may be true. It may be totally valid that we may just be different or whatever. Probably not. Um, but we can at least account for certain um, aspects of that system just by saying it's a property of the engagement that these guys are in. So if we want to simulate this in a complex uh, system where you can basically build in any kind of assumption that you want um, about the cognitive mechanisms of that person, you can uh, uh, stipulate any kind of information system that you want to put that sort of person in, and you can stipulate any kind of social system that you put that person in. So in this one, we wanted pretty optimal agents. So basically, um, they all update in accordance to the best sort of practical um, uh, models of reasoning, uh, models of rationality. Everyone is completely trusting and entirely honest. Hashtag Twitter, eh? Mm. Um, they connect each with each other through social media, uh, social, social networks. And we have two assumptions. One, some people die. Um, I'm going to die one day. Um, I hope all of you are as well, because that will be the laws of nature. Um, so we don't want to assume infinite time to process information, but rather a lifespan of information. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Uh, the other one is um, these agents consider some uh, beliefs too extreme. Um, so what do I mean by that? So this is a representation of one, person, one agent who has a belief ranging from zero to one, basically. So like total disbelief, total belief, and not really knowing. This may be his belief. So he is willing, in this uh, simulation, to engage with any other person who is within three standard deviations, that is that amount of people. Um, so he is willing to engage with any and all of those who are radically different from him in terms of beliefs, and will only consider too extreme uh, these 0.2% of the population. So he's what we would call a pretty open-minded dude. Um, so basically, he isn't willing to engage with anyone except the person who thinks, like, oh, the moon is made of cheese kind of thing. Um, so once we let them loose, uh, so you'd expect that they all converge at the same point, and you'd probably say, in this particular model, uh, we do define what is the objective truth of the system and what they're trying to figure out, yeah? And that's the middle bit here, which is 0 0.5. So some of them do move in there, but a lot of them end up caught um, away from 0 0.5, even though they, um, they have several interactions and they have a lot of interactions with people through this social network. They increase in their confidence, so they start out not knowing anything about the world, and in the end, they're going, no, 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 my version of this world is totally the right one. Yeah? But that's the case for all of these guys as well. Um, and they start pruning the networks. So in the beginning, they talk to a bunch of people. This is like the inverse of how many how different, uh, like how many differences of opinion there is in their networks. And then they, they self-purify and start um, pruning out their networks and become increasingly extreme. So extremism, at least in terms of echo chambers, doesn't depend on any special cognitive source. Um, we can get it to entirely rational agents, uh, that's totally pl uh, possible. Um, and indeed, none of the people who ended up in echo chambers had any special thing. They're all the same. 
Um, if we try, uh, try to edu introduce education into it, it reduces it a bit, but it doesn't take it away. Um, and these tendencies it only worsen if we introduce stuff like, for instance, you know how Google, whatever you like, like a page or something like that, or Facebook, you're more likely to see that thing. Yeah, so if we build that in, that makes everything worse. Um, if we make them confirmatory of prejudice or something like that, like for instance, having a confirmatory bias, that makes everything worse. Um, and rather problematically, um, so the foundation of our deliberative democracy is built on the assumption of the marketplace of ideas as a good place as long as rational agents meet. So as we made the access to, uh, to network, the larger we made it, the more people got stuck in objectively wrong echo chambers. So the access to people, like the bigger the social network and the, the more people you had access to, the worse the system became. Uh, so it turns out that Enlightenment philosophers may have been wrong on this point. So Benjamin, Jeremy Bentham at New Zealand, cry your bleeding heart out. Um, but obviously people aren't always optimal. So uh, if we want to build in, for instance, confirmation bias in a certain kind of strong way, we can do that. So the challenge here is to find not the, right, uh, not the optimal kind of AI, but find the right kind of AI that we're going to build into this system. Because a lot of people would build AI for very good reasons, and a lot of better than humans. Like if I want something to diagnose um, like illnesses and take over doctor's jobs, I want something that's better than humans. But also some people build things that are simpler than humans, typically sort of exploit for imitate models, which are used in sort of harvesting models. But what we're really interested in is building something that is as human as possible, including all our capabilities and fallibilities. So basically something a bit like Blade Runner, where we have something that actually mirrors how human beings think and how they see kind of information and all of that. So the main takeaway point that I sort of want to give here is when, once you uh, put in cognitive assumptions, you can build them into these social networks. You can simulate any kind of assumption that you have on that point, uh, be it in the sense of systemic properties, like building in Google. It can be in terms of cognitive, like building in biases. Or it could be in terms of social networks, like building in distance between you and other people. And you can simulate how that system plays out over time. And you can see how that actually affects the belief states of each of those agents and the, and the act, actions of those agents, which means that you can start testing interventions. But those interventions are only reasonably tested against something that is as human as possible. Because if we test it against like bullshit sort of theories like Homo economicus, then we're just going to get a totally different uh, response in terms of how to combat stuff like misinformation or sort of fake news or anything like that. So. But we can build anything that's computationally expressible. Anything that's computationally expressible. So um, this is just up to our imagination.